All right. So we're working fabric and it's a little complicated at times, is it? Well, hey, you know what? That's okay. I, in today's video, I've got three tips. That's three. Come one, two, three, maybe even four. <laughs> three tips to help make working in fabric super, super simple. All right, so make sure you do the whole YouTube thing. Do the like, subscribe, hit that, you know, like uh, pounds, you know, like it and whatnot. You know, really helps me out. I do appreciate it. And hey, if you want early access to this content, become a member of the channel. It helps support me, support the work that, that that's going on over here. And you'll get access to all these videos early, um, uh, you know, at least a few days, if not more. Uh, so uh, it really does help out. But we wanna make fabric easy. There's a lot that goes on inside fabric. So first tip, make sure that you're setting up your reports and you're using pins on them, okay? So you're pinning the, I'm sorry, not your reports, your workspaces, all right? So these are the workspaces that I use all of the time when I'm, I'm doing my, my current work that I'm doing, right? In fact, these are my two production workspaces I use all the time to go in and validate both my data analytics and my data engineering. So I've got those pinned, I use that often. This workspace, on the other hand, this is a workspace that I, I'm prepping for a conference. So it's a project-based workspace that I've pinned up because I'm using it all the time, right? By being very smart in how I do my pins, I don't have to worry about the, all of the workspaces that can be out there uh, that I might be trying to like struggle through and get in place, right? So just makes my life so much easier, okay? That's tip number one, make sure you're pinning. Tip number two is create the most basic of task flows that you're going to use uh, for your solution and then allocate the items to it, right? This is gonna make it really easy for you and the other people on your team to come along after you and to help support issues or items uh, or workflows inside of a given workspace. You know, because you know we've all been in or we've all seen a, a workspace where there's hundreds and hundreds of items in there. It can be really hard to understand where things are. Folders kinda help, but folders can really also make it confusing as to like, you know, where, you know, especially if there's a, like a complex workflow, the folders can make it confusing. This workflow up on top is, is really easy to make sure you've allocated everything into the appropriate bu uh, bucket. Now, these are pretty simple to do. In fact, uh, here, I'll actually, this is the basic analytics workflow, right? Uh, in fact, I'll show you how easy it is to add that. I'll delete it and I'm going to add this back in. So I just uh, scroll in here, select a pre-designated task flow. I'm gonna go in and there's a whole bunch of ones in here. I'm not gonna run through all of them, but let's, we're keeping it easy, right? So choose a basic data analytics workflow. All right, now we've got, it's very simple. Collect our data, store our data, create reports on top of it and then track it. In fact, you know what? I'm getting rid of track data. This is this is what I use often, right? So collecting my data is gonna be all of my data flows, right? Or my data pipelines. Storing my data is, there's gonna be two types of things that I put in my storing data. Number one, it's gonna be my uh, lake houses, my warehouses, or my SQL databases. And number two, it's gonna be my semantic models. And then my create visualization is gonna be reports on top of it, right? So really easy to group and manage your the content in your workspace by using this. And then when you click, you know, after you've assigned items, you click on it, you'll see just that filtered list of objects down below. Again, all of this helps make it really easy, okay? Number three, what is the number three item? Well, in this new window here, when you go to add an item, if I click on new, I see all of these different items that are in place that I, I, I might be using from, and this can become overwhelming, right? So what I'm gonna ask you to do is go in and favorite the ones that you find most useful. So uh, when it comes to visualizing data, we don't do dashboards, just don't, right? Um, we're not gonna be doing the exploration, uh, really a lot of it. Sometimes you'll do it. Some things you use on a regular basis, but in this case, uh, I use reports, which is the one right here. 
uh, and I use scorecards, okay? Those are the two things that I, I, I do a lot of, so I like to highlight those. Now, when it comes to getting data, I choose, well, you know what? I'm gonna swap myself over to the other side of the screen so you can more easily see what's going on here. Okay, when it comes to getting data, I like the copy job is fantastic. I use that. I use my data pipelines and I use my data flow gen twos. Okay. These are the these are the things that I use for for managing my data loads. I don't, you know, I might use some of these other items, right? I might use an event stream, or I might use Asmo or uh, Cosmos or mirrored Cosmos DP or mirrored Databricks, right? I might use some of these things. But I'm often using the copy job data pipeline gen two. Oh, and notebooks. I almost forgot about that one. So I've got to favorite that one. When it comes to storing data, uh, there, there's three things I'm going to use on a regular basis. Lake houses. This is great for my bronze layer where I have both structured and unstructured data. My warehouse, which is awesome for my silver layer, where I want to like reuse store procedures, reuse like uh, like classical you know data warehousing capabilities. I use that, and I also use um, the SQL database, SQL database, and semantic models on a regular basis. Okay, the when it comes to you know my storing my data, these are the four items that I use on uh, outside of there. Now, when it comes to preparing data, cleaning, transforming data, um, you'll see that there's a lot of things that are already selected, copy jobs. Um, uh, I'm actually, I, I will say I use Azure Data Factory as part of the like orchestration of everything that's gonna go on there. But everything I normally use is already selected. It's already favorited. I don't use Airflow a lot. Um, I don't use Gen 1 anymore. I don't, you know, these other things I might use on occasion, but I don't use them all the time. Right, so this goes simplify my my UI, my experience, right? And then when it comes to analyzing and training data, these items are one-offs. I don't use them on such a regular basis that I'd really go out of my way to f uh, favorite them. Same thing's true with tracking data or you know developing data. These these different things uh, and other items that they have done here, I just don't use them on a regular basis. Okay, what does favoriting do? Well. It makes it so simple. When I click on new items, it now shows me my favorited items that I have. And I've just got this like really curated custom view of what items I use in Fabric on a regular basis. And hey, maybe you don't use these often. Like, you know what, a, a strong case can be made saying, hey, you know what? I don't use Azure Data Factory, like the object Azure Data Factory. I create one and then I put lots of pipelines and other stuff into it. So I don't need to use it all the time. You know, same thing could potentially be for scorecards. I use them, but it's it's not on such a regular basis that I, I'm touching it all of the time. And I, when I'm creating new items, I go there, right? By being smart in how you use your favorites, you can really make this a very clean interface as what you have to like choose from and build on, all right? Now, these are my tips and tricks. These are three ones to like definitively make your fabric experience so much easier to work with, so easy to like follow, build and, and work in. Um, uh, but there's one big one that isn't something I can show you in the service that you should really take to heart. And this is your bonus tip. And this is true for all things in life. Keep it simple. Life's really difficult. Data work is hard. There's way too many things that go on in our lives that can distract us and can pull us away from the things that are necessary. Keep your work and your processes as simply as you possibly can. Uh, if you need complexity, maybe you do, but resist it, challenge it, figure out can you fit that uh, complexity within your solution and does it make sense for it to be there before you go adding something in, right? Like if you don't need lake houses, don't use lake houses. If you don't need event streams, don't use event streams. Whatever it happens to be, just keep it as simple as you possibly can. And you're gonna find that your life and your work becomes that much easier to manage and maintain. Now, 
if you find a problem, like, hey, you know what? I'm running into this issue and I'm really struggling because I, you know, I want to do X, Y, Z and I just can't inside of, you know, the, the simplicity that I have. Great. Add those components in. Maybe that's a one off and you'll make an exception to add in some data science or, you know, uh, uh, event streams or something along those lines. Or maybe you're laying the foundation for your next evolution of how you can simply work with data. All right. Now, I trust in you. I believe in you. I know you can do this. Go out there and have the best day ever and apply these rules. Let me know down in the comments what you think. What other trips, you, tick, trips, trips, tricks tricks and tips. I was combining those two. <laughs> Let me know what other tips and tricks you have down below to keep stuff simple. I love talking with you guys. You have the best day ever. Peace. Out. All right. I know I'm saying make it simple and I know you can do this, but sometimes it's not simple. Sometimes there's more. You need to talk with somebody. You need some help. Head over to bakertilly.com slash digital. Uh, fill out the little form out there. Myself, our colleague, will reach out to you. We'll make sure that you get the help that you need. All right? But if you think you can become a data god and you can do this yourself, check out these two videos that will set you up on the right course to be in that data god. All right? You, you, you have the best day ever.